everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. <laughs> and today we are finishing up some minis. We are. We're yeah. doing some finishing up. We were just talking about um, <laughs> how sometimes we sit down and it's like, okay, we've got two hours. Go. So many. Whereas we, what we should say is, we're going to take our time on this one. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna do, actually spend a little bit of extra time working on it. We're going to do the thing. So I have, I have my Terrapin. Uh, from the color challenge. All right. Yep. The yeah. five color challenge. Five color challenge. And I'm going to finish him up. I'm going to pretty much stick to the same color scheme that we were doing before. I don't have five okay. colors out though, because I'm being, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going right. to, I'm going to still, you know, stick to the pretty much the same, but I want to, I really liked how he was turning out and I liked how his, uh, how his face was turning out a whole lot. So I really want to see him, uh, completed. I think that he's that going to cool. yes. end up looking pretty good. I think it would be nice. It's definitely good. Uh, and I'm going to be working some more on the diet troll that we started last week. Um, so I get to do things like what I should have done from the start was put some, um, when I was going through and putting that, <laughs> the, the brown wash, mm -hmm. I should have messed around with a little bit of purple and oh, pushed true. some purple into the shading. Uh, so I'm going to go and back and put a little bit of purple. <laughs> we changed Wait. sides. Yeah, I changed you accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> What happened there? <laughs> Magic. That's what happened. Freaking me out. Uh, but yes, uh, so yeah, put a little bit of purple into his skin there. And then um, on some of the faces, particularly the ones that are on the um, the belly there, I'll uh, use a little bit of uh, Volupus pink Ooh. and uh, shinish purple contrast paints, which are great for th just thinning down a little bit and They've got a great intensity to them, so it will look like sort of tortured, twisted flesh. It should look like. Doesn't ever, doesn't everybody paint that? <laughs> <laughs> but, but I guess we should say hi to some people. I think we should. <laughs> Before it um, runs off the to all the people that noticed that we were. We were switching. It's because, you know, Dave and I interchange it. We looked so alike. It's like we the do. parent trap. It's just you know? like that. <laughs> you and I, Haley Mills, all exactly the way. Exactly. <laughs> like I was going to say Lindsay Lohan, but you know what? It's cool. I'm old. You're not. <laughs> yet, we, yet we're still twins. How about yeah, that? Yeah, I know. How does that work? Crazy. Hey <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> to Excellent. James. Hey to JT. Gurry, Luca Fio, uh, Roger Moore, see Josh Potter, Lauren. That's everyone on the screen I can see. So, um... Excellent. Anyone else type something real quick and say hello <laughs> to you too. Um, awesome. That's good. Oh. Now they're back. Are we back now? Are we, do we, which, I'm confused. Oh, I who knows? Like we're switched. It's who knows? That, that doesn't kooky. matter. Doesn't matter, I guess. That's fine. But uh, yes. So uh, I think everybody, well, I'm not sure if everybody saw the, uh, the work on the diatrol last week. And towards the end, I managed to get some of the greenish patches in on his skin there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a little bit more work on there. I get to finish up the heads, particularly this one in the back here, um, which is looking pretty cool at the moment. And uh, then there are all these little uh, wraps around the arms. There are some bracelets. And of course, there are the wonderful uh, skull accessories on the belt. You can't forget those. So I'll need to paint those up too. Mm. Definitely can't forget those. Fashion is important. Need to make it happen. <laughs> yeah. So I've done some. One of the things I've done with the um, the shyish purple here. Mm -hmm. There is just uh, mixed it in. Let me find where it is in my palette over here. So I've taken some of the uh, the tan. Uh, which was the base color for the the dye troll, and then mix a bit of uh, shyish purple in with it there, so that it's not like an immediate like jump to this really dark purple um, going into the shadows. So, so I start painting underneath the that sort of spot there, underneath these disgusting faces. I paint some in underneath the thighs there and then I can mix in a little bit more of the tan to start to blend that back in to the tan bits there 
So there we go. So that's where I'm starting with. What are you starting with? Um, so I'm taking um, a much more... Um, a better red. Oh, so I just throw him. Um, <laughs> and I am going back over that red, um, his kind of tattered red cloak there. Okay. Um, I definitely want it to still kind of have the same red tones from the Maryland flag, so a little bit more of a warmer red. Yep. Um, but um, I kind of, it was a little uneven, and I really wanted to kind of go over and blend those colors a little bit better and then pop some of those highlights out with a little bit more of an orange red just to kind of um tonally um make things work better okay. so get a little bit more of an opaque um coverage get a little bit more of a uh color scheme that was kind of more cohesive okay um i'm still gonna keep that that purple um in there on the uh, like maybe go for a glow effect in the eyes of the skulls i think that's gonna work out really well um but for the cloak i'm trying to kind of um clean it up a little bit and then there's one or two spots as i clean up the cloak where i i see i got a Little tiny little touches of red on the shell. Okay. So I'm gonna go back through with a um, with a brown that kind of matches and see if I can clean that up a little bit. I'll probably have to mix something that matches because the right. shell was very to get that tortoise shell kind of texture um, was a lot of blending and mixing. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, kind of just cleaning it up before I move on to uh, his armor and his uh, hammer, skull hammer. Cool. Skull hammer? Yeah. <laughs> For the cracking of skulls? Yes. The hammering of skulls? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Apparently my nails also match my many. <laughs> <laughs> How about I that? I planned that. No, I didn't. Mine um, too. Thank <laughs> you. Check it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Josh said she also matches the room. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. That's good. So what's uh, everybody in the chat? What are you uh, working on at the moment? You see Josh is singing uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. The theme. The theme. Dude. Oh, hey, kids. Do you know what time it is? <laughs> Uh, Jason wants to know, will the skulls match its handbag? Um, probably not. I think they're going to clash a little bit, but that happens. Excellent. Uh, David's demonstrating opposite colors this evening. The, uh, doing the green and red. Yeah. <laughs> well spotted. Contrasting. <laughs> Colors. Right. Uh, Roger is painting the final minis for Monumental? I is think that, so. Is that what you're doing? Ooh, That's my I guess. Think. I'm hoping. We'll get but fingers crossed we get extra see some of those. points if you guess the faction. <laughs> I, think you said that you were, I think you said the Japanese were the last ones you were working on. Yeah, I think so. That's my guess. Like, the last picture was the Japanese explorers, I'm pretty right. sure. Yeah. I don't know. I'm bound to be wrong, but hopefully I'm not too far off. <laughs> I think her nails have soaked in all the blood of her enemies from her sword. <laughs> <laughs> I have not been fight. I have been training, but... Um... There's been no tournaments this year um, because of COVID. Big surprise. Yeah, big surprise. Um, <laughs> but class just opened back up. Um, fun fact, though, class is on Thursdays. No. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. Thursdays and Mondays. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm here instead. It's one of the um, <laughs> things pre-COVID. Um, Thursday evening was the uh, was 
game night. Oh. But, thankfully, our host has gone, you know, we, uh, when, we get, when we get back to game night in a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to make it Wednesday night. Oh. I was like, sweet. I didn't even have to <laughs> you didn't have whine to and complain. Yeah. So, very appreciative of that. Roger says it's the monsters and heroes left. The base units are all done. Okay. Or core units. Cool. Sean Gleason finished the Tau Commander. About Ooh. to work on something? Something? I wonder what Sean is about to work on. Another Tau Commander? Uh, perhaps. <laughs> Tau Commander? Possibly. Uh, so Roger said, yeah, all of the base units are all done and core units, or well, the core units of the game. So that's good. Heroes and Monsters. It's only 16 to go. How many did you start with, Roger? And that's it? Is it over 100? Yeah, I thought so. You've got to feel, uh, feel pretty good when you're making it down to that, that final stage. Final countdown. Final countdown. It's a good song. <laughs> it's a terrible song, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's the essence 96. of the 80s. 96 total. Okay. So we're more than 80% of the way. That's the best way to look at it. <laughs> Good. Math. Maths, everyone. We math. Gave. Sorry. <laughs> I'm all about the math. It's all good. And the base. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jason I thought I'd get it. said, I found this mini called an Iron Guardian. And this wind race thing from WizKids, which kind of screamed Blue Falcon and mm -hmm. Dino Mutt to me. So then that's okay. what you're going to paint it as, right? Yes, I think so. <laughs> It looks like that troll could be dancing with itself. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Thankfully, it does, it does not have two left feet. It's got one left foot and one right foot. He always has a dancing partner. partner. Yeah. They can never agree on what, to, uh, what song to put on, though. <laughs> So taking the uh, this Belupus pink contrast paint and thinning it down just gives it a really nice kind of bruised, damaged kind of uh, tint to the to the skin. Such a crazy model. <laughs> Even this one has teeth, so I have to put them in. Yeah. This is gross. <laughs> <laughs> it is terrible. So, there we go. So Gretchen, how did the, uh, the premiere go? The on Saturday. Premiere. That's right. So I had the premiere for uh, Bloody Summer Camp. Yeah. Um, a 80s, um, 80s slasher fic um, is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so if your jam is uh, 80s films, the, the review said that it was like a love song to 80s horror. Um, and it went very well. Um, I was pleasantly surprised with everything all put together and um, I it was I didn't hate myself on screen I thought I was gonna hate <laughs> myself on screen I thought I wasn't gonna <laughs> like it I yep. mean um, I, I still watch if I see half painting happy little minis I'm still like why 
I don't I don't get why people watch me. <laughs> I get why people watch Dave. I don't get why people watch me. Um, and it's the same way. I felt like I was gonna feel the same way. Um, but I was I didn't hate myself on camera, and I was That's like, good. yeah. Um, do, 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 level up in confidence. <laughs> uh, but I uh, I enjoyed it. It was lots of fun. We had a full house, completely sold out. And um, they had to turn away people at the door. And all of the ticket sales went to the actual camp where the, um, where the film was set and filmed. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a camp for special needs children. So uh, very pleased with that, very that cool. we got that kind of a turnout and that it was able to go to a really great cause and the film looked great. And awesome. I, I got the longest death scene, Woo! Um, and the most, uh, and the most uh, audience interaction during my death scene. So I'm gonna take that as a win, guys. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I'm uh, really weird to watch yourself die on camera, though, and have people like commentating. <laughs> Being um, in the audience, and, and then they're not knowing that you're sitting right behind them. I'm sitting like right <laughs> next to them, but I'm a redhead in the film, and right. my hair is blonde now, and I'm uh, like obviously I was not dressed in like '80s clothes, um, right. <laughs> so like just hiding out, Clark Kenning it. Well, I was going to say, you know that this this makes an, like a whole lot of difference. Yeah, it, it really does. I different I had people. someone, uh, I had a Starbucks person who didn't recognize me with just makeup on and, right. and like I don't wear heavy makeup but the the difference between like me having my eyebrows because I'm yep. I'm blonde so spoiler my eyebrows go away <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> when I don't fill them in that was enough right. that was yeah they thought it was a completely yep. different person just crazy but um yeah so bloody summer mm -hmm. camp it's uh you can look Excellent. it up to get your own dvd copy <laughs> And um, you, I think it's actually, it was, they were talking about having it available on Amazon. Right. Um, so, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. I have now officially, well, I've officially been in two whole movies now. <laughs> but I've officially been like a main character in one whole movie. Awesome. Exciting. That's cool. Achievement unlocked. <laughs> um, Excellent. No, that's good. Congratulations. Uh, when we were talking before, Gretchen said that the reason that uh, there was a lot of interaction is that Gretchen's character was not a particularly likable character. Uh, that's true. I'm not supposed to be likable. I'm supposed to be mean. I'm supposed to be so mean. <laughs> and uh, during my death scene, the director said I, he had to add in more mean lines because people were... Uh, they do have it on VHS, Gurry. You can. You don't have to get it on DVD. They have VHS. Uh, limited edition, though. Um, so I don't know if they've sold out of that, but they did do a limited edition run of VHS, true 80s style. Awesome. Uh, but yeah, during my death scene, apparently I was too sympathetic. Yeah. And um, the director added in more mean lines because they needed people to root for my death. And apparently I just looked too sad. <laughs> Excellent. So I, I, I think that puts you up there with like uh, Jack Gleason, who played uh, Joffrey yeah, on Game of Thrones. That's what I was say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where the director was like, "We gotta make people feel bad for him." Nope. <laughs> nope. Not gonna Everybody happen. Was like, no. I hope he's dead. <laughs> and I think it puts me on the opposite end of that scale, though, because. Like, they start rooting for me to... It, it was crazy, because at first I thought, I was like... When the director first was like, yeah, I gotta, like, make it a little bit more, like, make you meaner. I was like, no. <laughs> um, but then watching the film in a theater and hearing... Yeah. Like, it's definitely the kind of film where you're encouraged to, like, yell at the screen and stuff. <laughs> People were actually, like, they were... They were rooting for me. I was like, oh man, like I'd, I'd run in and you'd see me like teary eyed and they'd be like, no. And then I, you know, I, I say some meaner things to people and I'm like, you gotta go save me. Like, um, I basically put other, tell other people to go die for me. Um, 
And, uh... Step in front of me. Like, as soon as I start saying mean stuff, everyone's demeanor just completely shifted, and they were like, die. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I was like, oh. Excellent. Um, but, yeah, it was just surreal. It was absolutely <laughs> surreal. Um, so, like, yeah. That was, yep. it was a fun time. I had a lot of fun. The movie was definitely... Um, definitely a fun time and an exciting, an exciting thing to do to be in a independent horror film. That's like, cool. Low budget horror film. Yeah. <laughs> Follow your dreams, kids. <laughs> awesome. Uh, next up, okay. I want to be in a creature feature. Yep. Look after you asked if it's going to be on Laserdisc. I, I don't know. I, I would guess. I, don't, I would guess no. I don't think so. I'm, I'm, I don't think they made any more. <laughs> but uh, uh, excellent. And hi, Gary. How you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight is uh, going back and finishing off some old, uh, so bought some previous paint jobs. So I'm working on the diatrol from last week. Yeah, lots and lots of details onto those faces now. I've just got them painted in the eyeballs. Look at that head. It's only got like seven eyeballs. That's, you know... Disgusting. The reasonable amount, <laughs> obviously. A reasonable amount. Eight would just be too many. <laughs> Seven's fine. Eight's where? Unreasonable. Eight is unreasonable. Who are they trying to fool? Eight is trying too hard. Yep. Seven seems like a sensible number, right? That's how I would pitch it if I was finalizing an <laughs> art thing on a budget. <laughs> Excellent. One, um, one little technique that I'm just going to show here quickly that I've just started to, um, maybe not started, but have been using a bit recently, is um, when I put in on some contrast paint as a wash. So I'll come back and just rub it a little bit to rub the any of the wet paint off the top of the surface leaving it at least a bit more of a gradual um or gradation down to the the paint in the uh in the shadows but i do need to be careful i don't leave it there too long but yeah it's wild <laughs> it feels so strange doing it <laughs> It's almost like reverse highlighting. Like you're allowing the highlight to go through. Yeah. Yep. It's, I'm mainly doing it so that I don't have to go back and do the highlight again. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Like it's kind of <laughs> allowing you to not have to, like, mid tone highlight. Like you yeah. can just go straight to that. Doesn't have to come. Yeah. High tone. It works pretty well, I think. I'm liking it. Is there an update on the former polar owl bear? No. <laughs> oh. There isn't. <laughs> nice. Sorry, everyone. Okay. Josh is enjoying his puns this evening, which is good. There we go. I think maybe now it's time to start on those accessories. Accessories. Accessories, so. accessories make the man, or in this case, troll. The die troll, yeah. Mm. That's the saying, is it? That's is that, the saying. That Accessories make the dire troll. That's the first time I've heard that. Well, that's the saying. Is that a, new, <laughs> is that a newfangled thing that the kids <laughs> are saying these days? It's all over the TikToks. Yeah. It's all over the TikToks. <laughs> How did you know? Awesome. <laughs> Accessories make the dire troll. That's cool. Excellent. Mm. 
Uh, one of the things that I've been uh, messing around with this past week is uh, the first 40 or so pages of the Art Of series of books. I'm very excited to get started on those. One of the uh, artists, Christoph, finished off his first uh, 10 or 12,000 words. Wow. And collected all of his, the photos that he wanted to, to use along with those words. And uh, then I got to sit down and start bashing them together. The How's that going for you? And the photos. Good. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. <laughs> things have, uh, things have, come on, uh, well, they're, I mean, coming together quite smoothly, which is nice. There's nothing worse than not being able to make them work when they don't, uh, don't line up when you're trying to do layout. But it's definitely good. And the cool thing is I'll be able to send it off to, uh, Christoph tonight and get him excited to finish up some more writing over the weekend. And I'll send it off to all the other artists and say, hey, here's where Christoph's at. How about you? <laughs> Nothing like uh, a little bit of uh, friendly competition, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Little friendly encouragement <laughs> who's Looks gonna like... be first exactly <laughs> i probably should have set like a a bonus right <laughs> i will send you these 15 miniatures if your book is finished first but i didn't do that I'll remember for next time, though. Okay. What color do you think I should do these wrappings? Or should I do them in, like, a leather kind of look? Or hmm. something a little bit different? Should I go with, like, a dark brown, dark black, dark brown? I think a dark brown would pop against the skin more. Yeah? I think that'll work. Okay. I'll go with that. What is, what do we got? Oh my goodness. Are <laughs> <laughs> you looking at the chat? I'm looking at the chat, yeah. <laughs> Looking Josh, at the chat. Josh and Luke have here. Having a good time. Pardon? Having a good time. They are indeed, which is good. Having a good time. A case of Ovaltine to the artist that finishes their section first. comes down there for the uh, for those skulls. We'll get those done first, and then onto the the leather wrap. Sean is thinking maybe a lighter leather. Mm. Should I go with that? I think mainly because so uh, the skin tone, even though it's that sort of it's. Well, because it's quite tortured and grim, it's uh, fairly, it's kind of mid-tone. So I need to go either light or dark for those wraps. After I paint these skulls, I'll check out, I'll do one of them one way and one the other. And we can vote on it. How's that sound? Sounds like a plan. Excellent. Excellent. That'd be good. What are we looking at? 
Okay. Uh, got a bit quiet. Yeah, I'm getting all these f folds on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So many. So many. I'm like, where does the light touch? Mm, places. Places? It touches places? Hey. He looks really good. Very textured. Cool. Yeah. Trying to be... Trying to be quick, yet also efficient. Um... But because I already have, like, the hardest bits of him, uh... Painted up. I say that. I'm going to learn something new today about how difficult it is to paint something. Right. Uh, a lot of it is just cleaning up. Um, and like, uh, there's a, quite a few places on the shell I'm going to have to go back and, and touch up. But yeah. I still love that patterning on the, the head. That's my favorite it's, part of it. Yeah. Um, so far. That's... I'm quite pleased with my, my box turtle. Well. Your turtle? My turtle. Excellent. Yeah, I think it looks really good. So, and then go in with a few different shadows, and then that's pretty much going to be done. I'm wondering if I should mess around with a tattoo on this guy. Ooh, that could be fun. Then you just got to imagine, like, who was the tattooist? How they get to sit still long enough? I'm always a fan of things that give questions <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to minis. Yeah. I think if I did it, it as, like, a fairly simple tattoo. Like almost geometric shapes. That could work. And who knows, he could have gotten it before the... Uh, before the mutations began? For that. <laughs> right. Well, and there's, there's another question, like, when do they uh when do they start mutating? <laughs> when are the heads born? Because they all appear Well, the ones at the top at least all appear of a similar age. I don't know, but they like the, the head that's forming from his uh is it chest the chest torso. Yeah. Uh it doesn't look like it's a baby. No. It looks a little bit like uh like Jack Nicholson from um, <laughs> In the Shining. Down there. Oh, he does. Here's Johnny! <laughs> That's what I say every time I see Johnny. Yeah. Here's. <laughs> I'm and I'm sure it never gets old for him. No, it doesn't. It's great. <laughs> he loves it every time. Every time. <laughs> every single time. He's like, thank you. <laughs> He actually screams and runs away. <laughs> Excellent. Also, JT says that you should totally do the tattoo. Do it. <laughs> James cool. says it should be something he do would not like. Yeah. So I think... Um, Looking at some of these other bits on here. So this one does look like it's uh, like a leather wrap. And then under here, it looks like there are um, like maybe metal nails. Or I could do them as ribs. I might paint them as ribs. Um, I think this is a metal bracelet of some kind. This looks like a leather wrap. Um, around here, these two definitely look like leather wraps. And then there's a... Like a brace, or oh, an, an anklet, I guess they're called. So, yeah, I have to go with that. Yeah, let's get these painted, these ribs. And I think, uh, 
Yeah, where is it? It's always a uh, like an interesting question to ask or thing to to work out when you're um, painting a detail over the top of an area you've already painted. Um, do you paint it all black and build up from there, or do you paint it a dark color so that like here it will stand out from the the skin, or do I just go straight into painting? the bone color. How do people approach it? I think normally I would, uh, if it was going to be metal, uh, I would paint it black. But because it's going to be, I'm going to be painting it up as a bone, sort of look. Um, I don't want to have that, want it be too, want it to, I don't want it to be too jarring in the difference there, the black and the the skin. So I'm going to go with a dark brown using my favorite dark brown, charred brown. And then I'll build up the bone from there. But because it has that shadow around it, it will uh, pop out from the skin a little bit more, I think. Lucafio says, I would give it a base coat to enhance the look that I want yep. the at the end. Yep. But Sean says, paint it normal, then, a, then an appropriate wash around it. Oh, then, it, then apply an appropriate wash, yeah. That would be one way to do it as well. And depending on how heavy-handed I am with the with the bone colors here, I might need to do that. <laughs> one of the things that's um, that's kind of important to do when you're painting is always think about the um, the correction so if you've made any mistakes or you need to tidy something up or come back and uh, just fix something don't be afraid to do that if you're spending a lot of time painting and you're, you're on a deadline make sure you build time into the uh, into the painting session to do that correction as well so otherwise when you get to the end You'll be disappointed. Because you'll have those mistakes. And you'll know they're there, even if somebody looking at them doesn't. You'll know. Oh. Let me start the signal coming in there. I'm glad I'm painting them first before I painted them wrap around there because I'm not being too clean. But thankfully, that means the correction, fixing up those, can be done in that first layer of painting, which is cool. Okay. Crazy model. <laughs> it's insane. There we go. So we talked about what I've been up to and what Christian's been up to. Leona, what have you been up to? Um, Outside my, of work. <laughs> in my life? <laughs> yeah. Like fun stuff. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, I moved. You moved? Yep. Oh, my goodness. This I didn't week. know you were moving. Yeah. 
and yeah. That so was, was that fun? Basically, or not fun? Yeah, it was fun. Now I have a new place. Cool. So that's nice. That's yeah. exciting. In terms of hobby things, haven't really done a lot of that. But yeah, that's about it. So I had to pack up all my painting stuff. Oh, I did actually give gift my brother some mini brushes, mini paint brushes. Oh yeah. And some brush cleaner and a table lamp, like one that had a magnifying glass on it. Okay. Uh, cause he's fin finishing up the war of the ring miniatures. Right. It came out along a while ago. Yeah. So Excellent. yeah, that was nice. Is he's he really enjoying those? Get, yeah, he's been getting into it. And I got to show him my, uh, my mini that I painted. Very cool. The, like, Arkin, the Cruel. Mm -hmm. Right. That was fun. And I told him all about the um, edge highlighting. highlighting. Right. Because he hadn't heard of that before. Cool. So I felt very knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> you got to explain edge highlighting to him? Yep. <laughs> very cool. Also, hello, Dave H. Cool. Hey, Dave. So did you uh, blow his mind with the idea? I think he was... It's kind of like once you know, you're like, why didn't I think about that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so obvious, but he was like, oh, yeah. That makes sense, like, that you use the side of the brush. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Especially those models were from, I think, 2005 or 2006. Okay. So, uh, because they're like before 2010, they're pretty, they're really small. I think they're true to scale. All right. True, yeah. Um, or true scale. True scale. Yeah. Yep. So, what's the like pretty small one? Is that 35? millimeter uh no the no no, no. 35 be... lane th this is probably like a even though it's a big miniature and it's taller than like 50 mil it'd be a um like 28 millimeter scale okay so yeah the smaller would be um like 15 mil or 20 mil yeah i think they might be 20 mil possibly so it's just a bit tinier yeah So it's kind of helpful to know how to manipulate your brush better because you don't have very many things to even detail. Yeah. Yeah. You got to use a couple of tricks to get uh, some, to really pull the detail out of the miniature. <laughs> yeah. He was like, my elves are so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Like, that's fair. And I think he's about half done. Okay. So that's cool. Yeah. Well, and he was fun. We had a good discussion about just like hobbies in general, which I feel like everyone here can relate to, where you get into it and so you don't upfront a lot of cost. But then when you get more into it, in retrospect, you're like, why didn't I buy all this nice, st <laughs> nice stuff for myself? <laughs> um, yeah. But it, it's because like over time, your interest evolves and changes. So you might have not even liked it if you bought all that stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. It is a, <laughs> it is a difficult thing. I. Well, the great thing about miniature painting is that, yeah, you can you can spend like fifty dollars and find out if you like it or not. Yes. Whereas if you're talking like um, like racing cars, for example, <laughs> there's no fifty dollar expenditure there to find out if you're really going to enjoy it. Yeah. 
Yellow Coffee says, when doing those smaller minis, it feels like painting with needles instead of brushes. So Yeah. I got him some of those really tiny ones. Okay. Um that really are like twenty hairs or something <laughs> right. like that. Okay. Because uh, I figured that would be helpful. I think for doing um, for doing very fine detail work, like painting eyes, for example, they can be. But uh, one of the things that you might find with um, with a smaller brush that has a very few very few hairs on it is that it, it won't doesn't hold the paint a lot. Oh. It doesn't hold a lot of paint, so you're always going back to. Constantly gotcha. getting more paint off your palette, kind of thing. Rookie mistake. Well, no, no, it's just <laughs> it, it, they're different different tools for different things, and um, but it's just something to to be aware of. It might work for him just fine. Yeah, because I think at this point he didn't act. He just had craft. Um, Paint brushes, right? That were like super cheap. He told me he got like a pack of a hundred, <laughs> right? For like five dollars. When you get those and and the the hairs sort of spread out like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, every time I paint, I basically like use a new paintbrush. Yep. I was like, here's some nicer ones. Here's ones you might want to come back to. What a good sister. <laughs> and here's some brush cleaner so you can properly care for them. Excellent. Because although I might not be a good painter, we've talked about stuff <laughs> enough. <laughs> there are Paint the eyes before the face. Interesting. Yeah. And Leona, don't sell yourself short. You're a perfectly fine painter. Yep. We have video evidence. <laughs> we do indeed. We mentioned before, Josh mentioned uh, me going with the uh, contrasting colors, the green and the red. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing now with the... Um, with this red kind of loincloth thing is I'm actually using uh, I'm using dark sea blue but it's a green Ooh. so I'm using that to shade the, the red so just thinning it down and painting it into uh, painting it sort of I am in the trying shadows under here. desperately to clean up all the little edges I'm probably thinking too hard on it right as um, if I keep this guy, I highly doubt anyone's going to pick him up and just yes <laughs> and scrutinize him too much. <laughs> um, I see you've missed very small pieces of <laughs> blanket. Uh, that doesn't seem highly likely. Um, but as we mentioned earlier, you always know. Yeah. Um, well, not not Dave is in Dave always, but he does. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you yourself. So, sometimes I guess. Yeah. But no, it's a. Uh, it's one of those things. You just have to determine it. Like, do I care enough? Do I care enough to go back and do it? Or am I okay with it? Depending on what it's going it to be used for. Sometimes it doesn't need to be as uh, sharp or as polished or as finished as, uh, as something else. If it's going to be uh, sitting on a shelf a lot, mm -hmm. maybe you don't even need to paint the back of it. Just paint the front. If it's going into a diorama, you can do it that, like that. Something where it's going to only be seen from one angle. It's so much more done that way. <laughs> oh, Jason had a question. Oh, yeah? Do you just thin with moisture on the palette? Or do you add something else? Uh, 
usually I'm sort of working a, a mixture of uh, water from the cup. So from my cup of water, which it was clean at the beginning of the show, just so everybody knows. Um, so water from that, uh, I'll bring that and sometimes I'll get a big splodge of water and put it onto the, the palette somewhere and then just go back and forth like that. Uh, sometimes it'll be, um, there'll just be enough moisture from me licking the brush to do what I need to. And sometimes um, the paint will be thin enough out of the pot to sort of be the consistency that I'm looking for. So I kind of, it's, usually it's a mix, but um, not, I don't really kind of rely on the moisture from the, from the uh, sponge and such. That's sort of there to, to keep the, um, the paints fluid a little bit longer than all. And um, yeah, I, I was super busy today, so I completely forgot to uh, change my paper, which is why I don't have a fresh sheet for tonight. And it looks crazy. But, um, yeah. It'll work just fine. But yeah, hopefully that's giving you enough an answer there, Jason. So when we were talking before about the, the base colors, I went around and painted all of those leather wraps with, um, with the dark brown. Okay. And then for the the bracelet and the anklet that are going to be metal, I base coated those in black. Just because I want a stronger pop against the um, against the skin there for for those. I think I'm going to do those in um, in silver because he has a lot of like there's a lot of warm colors going on, so the skin is warm, the red. Um, the brown leather, that sort of thing. So by doing them in silver, it'll um, just break that, give a little bit of neutral, a neutral kind of finish to it. Which will be good. Dave H asks, how often do you change out the paper? How often do I change out the paper? It, um, it varies. Usually I change it out once I get to this sort of point where I've used all of the space. <laughs> it's a magical mystery. Magical thing. process. <laughs> yeah, I, I go to sleep and in the morning I wake up and the fairies have changed it for me. And then I yell at them because there was a color on there that I'd mixed and I wanted to come back to. And you're like, and then how they dare just, you? <laughs> fairies. They just point and laugh. Point Because they're laugh. actually, they're um, Trixie types of fairy. They're like a pixie. Really. A pixie? Yeah. Yeah. They're like um, Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> Except instead of being... First they're sour. This, this, f f well, they're first sweet. they're sweet and they do something nice for you and then they're sour. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so it's kind of like the reverse, I guess, of Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> It's always nice when there's something on there that's got a lot of good texture and the the uh, rope belt that he has. It's got that, so very quick to just quick uh, dry brush slash edge highlighting kind of thing, using the edge of the brush to pick that out. Which is nice. I can swing around to the back here and get that underway. And one other thing that uh, I'll mention is that this week was the final, or Monday was like the final day of school for my daughters. So now they're on their summer 
some holidays and uh, so on Tuesday I came upstairs to grab a or well, came up from the basement to the kitchen to grab a cup of coffee and my daughter Lucy was in there and Lucy's nine and she uh, was mixing up uh, a whole bunch of stuff. She had some flour out and she had eggs and some milk. And I was like, oh, what are you doing? She goes, I'm making waffles. <laughs> so she mixed up a big batch of waffle batter and then just sat there and with the waffle iron and made waffles. That sounds great. Yeah. I see no problem in this. <laughs> was, it, was it a good thing? I can't tell. <laughs> it, was, it was a good thing, in, like in general. Um, then, uh, so that was Tuesday. Wednesday was uh, brownies. She made brownies. Oh, so. Very cool. And um, what did she make today? I think she made slime today. Not yeah. as delicious. Not as delicious as brownies or waffles, but, uh, and this one was a little bit messy. But you did taste it. <laughs> I didn't taste the slime, no. No, but I, I, was, I was a little bit worried. Like, I came up and was like, what's all this thinking that she was going to say powdered sugar oh. and she'd made something like with a whole bunch of powdered sugar all over the, uh, the countertop. And then she said, Oh, it's cornstarch. And I went, okay. So you made slime. Yes. Okay. But I, it just means that for the next two and a half months, I have a feeling that every day I'm going to come up <laughs> and there'll be a different thing. I mean, hey, baking is a very good skill to have. It is. Yeah. It is. That's true. That's no problem. I, I loved to bake as a kid. I still love to bake, but... Yep. Um, how, how are you on the cleaning up afterwards? Um, well, I do not like leaving a dirty kitchen. Um, I take it uh, that is a skill yet mastered. Yet to be... Your, uh, uh, Yes, but my, also my daughter does not have a not have a care in the world about leaving a dirty kitchen. <laughs> so that's the only thing I'm worried about. But I usually also get a little help if I've gone out of my way to make things for people. Right, that's good. That's fair. My fiance doesn't typically eat sweets though, so I don't bake quite as much as I did. Right. That's okay, though. And yeah. So, I th yeah, this this summer is going to be the summer of learning that uh, desire to have a clean kitchen. <laughs> Josh Potter says, well, you know what they say. Bake it till you make it. <laughs> yes. Or fake it until you bake it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with that one. That should be good. Oh, I just noticed that it's eight o'clock. Mini wow. time. You know what that means. Minis, minis. Yep. Time for Let minis. Let's check out some minis. Here we go. <laughs> Bye, look off you. Have fun. Yes, Dave, you have not missed the minis. They are here now. And first up we have, uh, ooh, a very cool uh, Space Marine here, an Assault Intercessor from Ashland Marie. Hydro Dominatus. I like the weathering on that chainsaw. That weathering on the chainsaw is, is very cool. So this is uh, from the uh, Alpha Legion, who are... Um, the masters of subterfuge and confusion. Nobody knows quite what's going on with them. <laughs> well, they, they know it's evil. Apart from that, though. And that's all you really yeah. need to know. <laughs> but uh, no, Ashlyn's done a great job here. It looks really nice. I'm liking the, um, as well as on the chainsaw, um, so uh, I'm also liking the weathering on the, the blue armor um 
So the just a very subtle, uh, particularly down towards the bottom, the subtle um, like black wash um, that Ashlands use there to uh, get that shading and sort of dirty it up a little bit. And we're loving the uh, tilting shield there on the model. Looks uh, very cool. Nice work, Ashlyn. That's great. Chris Gorka painted up Captain. Uh, actually, I think. Chris, I'm not sure if Chris, I don't think Chris is with us, but uh, I think Chris was painting these up for himself. Oh. Yep, a little bit of a change, but uh, yeah, looking very cool here. So this is a uh, the leader of the Adeptus Custodes, but he's in, normally there in, um, well, the typical color scheme that you see is uh, like a gold, all gold armor. But Chris has painted him up in, um, it's one of the other uh, organizations within the custodians. I think it's um, I think it might be the Solar Watch, which have that really bright white armor, looking very cool and really nicely balanced with the uh, that purple, that super rich royal purple. Oh, Chris is here. He said, "Oh no, there's a commission." Ah, <laughs> so I got it wrong that you weren't here, and I got it wrong that there was a commission. <laughs> I'm just going to be quiet get now. it right. Ah, I will eventually. Get it together, Dave. I'll get there. Get it together. <laughs> but great work, Chris. Nice one. Very cool. Oh, and James. James, we get to see uh, Black Beauty. Wow, that turned out great. Yeah, looking very cool. And my favorite thing is that James has the fan behind it so that he can turn it and blow, have it like <laughs> sail across the... The uh, table. But yeah, looking good. Lots of uh, great sort of detail work and trim work in there, around the edge of the uh, the uh, the boat there. Looking very cool. I'm not sure what the the word the the technical term is for it. You can see like like the gold trim along the edge of the railings. I don't know either. I want to say gunnels. I like don't know enough about whales, ships. but uh, I could be wrong. But yeah, looking cool. Nice work, James. I think he's got a couple more that he's working on as well. Jason, we know Jason's here. This, uh, this is the second Magus. I think this is the one you were working on last week or the week before. Is that right? Love that edge highlighting yeah. along the shin guards there. Like on the... Oh yeah, yep. Definitely uh, a lot of uh, edge highlighting work there for sure. And I'm liking the... Uh, Sort of the gold, the brassy gold on the um, the sword uh, guard and pommel. That's looking quite neat. That's a really interesting sort of shaped guard there. Looks wild. But yeah, nice work, Jason. Looks cool. Oh, Jason Sutton. A treant from uh, Loot Studios. Yeah, this is looking very nice. I think I got a very tree beard vibe. There. <laughs> very, but, very, uh, very inty. Yep. Look at that lovely, uh, I was thinking that the lovely bushy beard. There. Yeah, and those little pops of red too. I think those are mushrooms. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That definitely works well against them there. I always love those sort of disc mushrooms that yeah, grow they from, the, grow up, from the yeah. side of trees. It looks very neat. And I love that uh, sort of, it's either a piece of uh, f like flagstone or paving stone or a mile marker maybe that he's got grab like wrapped in his right hand there. But yeah, looking oh, nice, Jason. Yeah. Done a great job on that. Looks cool. Josh, she a shield maiden. Very cool. Yeah, you know, I think I have that same chain mail. Hmm? <laughs> I said, I think I have that same chain mail same address. same chain mail address. I think I've worn it on the show. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have too. Very cool. So who's this from, Josh? You'll have to let, it, let us know. She does look very uh, very fantasy viking esque Yes. You can tell the, the Valkyrie wings there on the, the helmet. It's uh, looking cool. I want to, see, want to know what the design was on the other side. I'll have to go and... Did Josh post this in the group? 
Or on the form? Just on the... Uh, in the group, but only one... Um, only one shot? Shot, yes. Ah, I wonder if that means he hasn't finished the backside there yet. You're going to need to show us that shield design, uh, Josh. It is from Reaper. Very cool. But yeah, nice work there. I think it's looking, uh, she's looking great. Oh, JT painted up Foul Blight Spawn. The t shirt I'm wearing Ooh. tonight is a Death Guard t shirt. The Foul Blight Spawn is from the Death Guard Army. Looking very cool. Yep, loving that uh, that foul green concoction in that tank there. It does. I like how only half of it is. I don't know if it it was on the sculpt or not, but um, I like how only half of it is painted. It's half full, like it's leaking yep. out or something. Like uh, I think that was a very clever choice. And yes. I, I'm going to guess it's a choice because I can see yep. the highlighting on the edge there to give it dimension. It's a it's a choice. Normally, that's like flat. It has those cracks in it, mm -hmm. but it's like it's supposed to be glass, and you kind of look through in the inside. And yeah, you could have it completely full. You can have it half full. Definitely gives it a, a, a element of story yeah, at play. Definitely, definitely. So, JT, are you a uh, noxious tank, half full or half empty <laughs> kind of guy? We need to know. But yeah, looking great. Really like that. And I love the uh, that insanely magenta nurgling down the front there. Yeah, excellent work. Cool. Ooh, Keith David. First time painting a bust. 52 millimeter scale. This is really cool. Yeah, when you get to... When you, you paint a, a bust of a model, which is where you're not worried about painting the whole thing and having it standing somewhere or doing something, whatever it might happen to be. Um, and you can just focus on things like the skin tone here. He's put a, um, some nice sort of extra colors in there. Looking at that really sort of worn look around the eyes. That sort of bloody look in there. The great uh, tones in the, in the uh, beard and the hair. Looks great. Nice work, Keith. Excellent job. Oh, this is the town commander that Sean says he's just finished up. Looking very cool. I like the, uh, again, that it's not quite as uh, vibrant and magenta as, uh, as JT's Nurgling, but uh, yeah, that reddish purple, the purple on the end, on the reddish end of the the uh, spectrum there is looking really nice against that solid yellow, a nice warm yellow. And the blue works really well against it too. Particularly that uh, the glow on the, the left hand side and the um, and also in that in the braces there. Oh, yeah. I just realized I need to lean over and show. It does look good. <laughs> uh, yeah, looking very cool. Nice work, Sean. Looks great. Oh, Stephen McDonald has painted up Nagash, the Lord of Death. Ooh. So, um... Wonderful sculpt. It is ama an amazing sculpt, yeah. And actually, this is a conversion that, um, oh, wow. that Stephen's done. Which is, um, pretty amazing. Um, oh, sorry. I just noticed, uh, JT said, Nurgle is happy to share, so the tank is half full. <laughs> Good job. Uh, yeah, normally uh, Nagash here is uh, standing up, but uh, Stephen has converted him to um, to be sitting down on a um, super cool. I think was it two weeks ago yeah. when Jeff was on. We saw um, a work in progress of this. Yes. Yep. Cool. I'm not going completely insane, or maybe I am. But uh, yeah, yeah, Stephen's done a great job here. So much work, a lot of conversion work, and then so much painting on this. So each of those, um, you can see the the size of the skulls and the um, the ghosts yeah. sort of running around him there. So it gives you an idea of how big that uh, that model is. So I think the the skull on Nagash's shoulder 
It's probably a little bit bigger than one of the, the diatrol heads. So, but yeah, beautiful work there, Stephen. Yeah, and I, actually, yeah, I remember this as well because we said that um, green and purple is an evil combination. Yeah. <laughs> so says Disney. So says Disney. Yeah. <laughs> they own everything, so they gotta be right. Gotta be right? right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. But again, nice work, Stephen. Congratulations. Looks great. Nice. Very cool. So thank you very much, everybody, for uh, sharing your miniatures with us. Uh, for those of you who aren't in our Facebook group, and we have a Facebook group called, surprisingly enough, Painting Happy Little Minis. Uh, you're welcome to come along and join us there and post photos of models that you're working on, uh, things that you finished recently. I'm going to turn this around and see. Do that. Yeah, so you can check that out while I'm doing the spiel. Um, things you've painted recently, uh, if you've got questions or if you've got suggestions or if you're, you found a new product that you're really excited about using um, and you want to tell other people about it, um, definitely uh, join up and let us uh, or do all of those things. Let us know about them. Uh, but uh, Leona has also popped into the stream or she's going to be popping into the stream, I guess. Uh, a link to a form where you can submit your uh, photos of your minis if you aren't on Facebook. Or even if you are on Facebook, I guess. And then we can show them uh, during the show each week. Oh, I'll do that at the end. Oh, Leona will do that at the end. Not now. <laughs> Later. Hmm? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to catch you, uh, catch you oh. overbed. So where yeah. are you at are you on your guy? Uh, so now I'm doing the, um, after going, going back and doing some of the uh, shading, using the dark sea blue. Yep. I am. Knock my guy out of his. His holder. I, I'm oh. apparently rough with many. <laughs> Now I'm going, uh, going along and highlighting the, um, the red cloth. So I think if I can uh, get that done, then it'll be the, the leather wraps will be the next thing. And then the final thing will probably be the, uh, well, sorry, the next to final thing will be the bracelet and anklet. And then the final thing will be the basing. Awesome. I am almost done with the flat colors for his um, his skull axe hammer here. Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to try to make the eyes look glowy. Okay. Um, oh, the eyes on the skull? Yeah. Cool. With that purple that we worked with last time. So I can still stay true to the challenge. Excellent. Um, and then he has a whole bunch of like medallion things on his chest there, but I think that's going to be a real quick deal of just slapping some of the, either the bronze or the silver, and then maybe doing a wash over it because they overlap so much that I right. don't, I don't think it's going to be a particularly, uh, detail inducing kind of thing. Cause you, you can't really get in there. And right. you can't really see it because he has the weapon in front of him and I have his skin black. So um, that's not a super hard concern of mine. Cool. That'll probably be my lesson learned rushing at the end of the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the end of the show? Yeah. <laughs> nice. But That'll be good. Excellent. So... Kind of weather those skulls up. They're super textured for skulls. Yeah. I wasn't expecting so much texture. I gotta say, when you um, when I was just looking at the the monitor and seeing your uh, how you were starting painting it, mm -hmm. I was like, "Is you painting? Is you making that snow? Is that going to be a big snowball? Because there was that texture on. I could see that texture on there. Yeah, it's it's so. super textured. Um. Interesting. Right now, it's making me think of a toasted marshmallow, though. Okay. 
just because of the... <laughs> I'll try but, ask you. but, you know, depending on how that lighting arrangement happens, uh, maybe it'll... All right. It'll all ease up. Um, oh, that reminds me. You say it's toasted, toasted marshmallow. I'm actually going uh, glamping this weekend. Oh, glamping. Glamping. Yeah. Yep. We're staying in a yurt. Oh, is that glamping? Sure. I thought yurts were like. I thought glamping was supposed to be more more uh, fancy pantsy than a yurt. Well, no, I think. A um, glamorous yurt. <laughs> well, it's not. It's not overly glamorous, uh, but uh, it does have like beds in it, and uh, and. There is not. There's a bathroom, but it's not in the yurt. There's a bathroom in another another building. But uh, yeah. yeah, I always call it I call it glamping. And, and for me, unless you're like setting up your own tent and unrolling your sleeping bags and that kind of thing, that's camping. Ah. For me, glamping is is anything that is sort of elevated above that. Okay. Fair enough. If you're not sleeping on the on the ground, it's glamping. <laughs> I don't think I've uh, glamped in quite a while. Then. Right. <laughs> of course, that's just my definition of it. So, it may work differently for other folks. Uh, Josh says. Um, where does improvement become so incremental that a painter has developed their own distinct style? That's a good question. I don't know if I know the answer to that question. <laughs> no, I don't know the answer either. Um, I would, I would say that that happens over over many years. Um, and personally. I think that it's easier for other people to see your style than it is for you to see your own style. Um, like, I always have a hard time. I think I, I have an incohesive style with uh, general in, in general for art things. Sorry. Um, Just adding some water. <laughs> yes, talking um, about style. But uh, I know I have other friends that have said they can see a, a, a patterned style. Right. Um, and I know I can see it with my friend's art, um, as well. I don't know if other people have the same kind of experience with that. Um, but that's my personal experience with it. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, uh, it's, yeah, I think it's always going to be a, a personal thing. Um. I think there's a point that you can reach where I think you can have a style, potentially have a style all the way through, um, even while you're improving or learning more. Um, and that style thing could be a um, a way that you approach your brush strokes, or it could be the colors that you use, or um, where you put colors or if you always use a particular um, color or you always uh, use a particular contrast level kind of thing. There's lots of different styles, uh, ways that style can show itself. Um, but I think that they, they, sometimes there comes a point or there'll be plateaus, I guess, as people are progressing through their journey where they're like, I'm I'm ready just not to worry about having to learn anything new or taking a new approach or something like that. Um, and then for a little while, their painting will remain the same. Or it might might be that their the quality of their painting stays the same, but they get a little bit faster at it um, as they're going. But I, th I don't think don't know that there's any one point where that happens. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure there's any one point. I think it um, it's organic. It's super organic. 
Yeah. Sometimes it might take years, as Gretchen was saying. Other times, if you're you decided that you're going to paint like a mini a day for a year, that might speed up the process. <laughs> so it might take months to achieve rather than years or, um, yeah, I don't know. I think if you're always looking at other people's work and looking for things that you like um, in their work or things that you'd like to try or approaches that you'd like to take or techniques that you'd like to explore, you can always just keep moving forward even if it is incredibly slowly. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Sean says, uh, I see that I have a distinct style, much different than others. Um, yeah, I think I have a style, but it's a fairly, fairly generic kind of style. So, um, Chris Gorka has a particular style, particularly in the, in the color choices that he makes. Um, I think we all have them. Some of them might just be a little bit more obvious than others. Um, sometimes you might have a combination where it's the ch color choices, the techniques, the finish, the um, so many different things it can be. Yeah. Sorry I didn't have a definitive answer there for you, Josh, but that's uh a very broad philosophical question. We could debate, debate it for hours over a beer. Or beers. If it's going to be for hours. Yeah. Are you worried, Josh? Do you feel that you have a style or that you don't have a style? Who else feels like they have a style? That's a good question. Or if you have something positive to say about someone else's style. Oh yeah. Or if you don't feel that style matters. Ooh yeah. That's fine too. I'm waiting for somebody to say that. It's, it's going to be interesting. Oh. Uh, Dave Hummel says I do have a style. This is especially on my personal projects versus commission projects. Hmm. I think for my uh, personal projects, I do a lot more conversion work in the minis that I create. And I might mess around a little bit more with uh, with color schemes. Whereas my commission work might be a little bit more sort of by the book. Kind of thing. Let's see if I have any other purples to work with to get this glowing. <laughs> Get the glow, thing, glow going. Oh. What was that? oh, that was loud. I had to scoot back. <laughs> um, if you need a purple, and we don't have it over there, that same kind of very bright. Is it? Um, it sorry, a... sorry, folks, I'm just gonna rummage for a moment. Oh, it was like that pinky purple, yeah. Oh yeah, that's it. The one that you've got there. Yeah, the yep, one. right here. Cool. You got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get a couple of different shades to try to figure out how to make it uh, look glowy. Oh, okay. Kind of neon-y glowy. I know how to make, I know the pattern for glowing uh, in neon. Right. But for a kind of illuminating from an eyeballs look. Okay. I'm not, I'm not 100%, but we're going to play and we're going to see. I tried to do some highlighting on the inside of the eyes to make it look like the eye, eyes were like pshoo. Um right. But the texture on the inside of the skull isn't like completely smooth. So my paintbrush kept getting like 
intervened, <laughs> like getting right. interrupted by the other parts of the skull, would be like, no, <laughs> you can't put a dot there. Um, <laughs> skull is telling you how you can paint it. It is. It's very rude. That's wild. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to find out. Cool. Um, That's good. <laughs> yeah. uh, Much quieter scooting in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, James says, I do what I like for each miniature, and that's totally cool. Uh, Dave Hummel says, um, he thinks my style is very clean and precise. Uh, personal projects seem to always want to tell a story. That's true. JT says, okay, I'll say it, Dave. I'm not sure that style matters too much. If you're doing uh, commissions, I think it's less important to have a personal style as long as the client is happy. Doing your own minis, as long as you're happy with it, that's what matters as opposed to style. Just my two cents, for sure. Yep, if you're enjoying the the experience of the painting and you're enjoying the result, that's the, the, the kind of the two key things, right? Yeah. Definitely good. So I think uh, sometimes there are uh, projects where I, I don't follow my usual style, uh, like projects we'll do here and minis that we'll paint, and I'll be like, Actually, because I took a break from how I would normally do something, or I feel I would normally do something, <laughs> I was like, actually, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I think I'm very experimental. Um, I feel like uh, with normal artistic things uh, where I'm doing like painting on paper, yep. I tend to be um, a lot more painterly in my strokes, very freeform and painterly. Right. Uh, it's very hard to do that on a mini. I've played with it with some minis, but I think it plays better for larger scale projects so that those yeah. tiny little brush strokes can actually come through. Um, I would agree. Let's see if I can find the silver. Just gonna lean over and rummage for a second. I believe in you. Real quick. So long, Roger. Oh, bye, Roger. He's gonna go play games. Win the games. Thanks for joining. Win all the games. Excellent. Uh, sadly, I could not find the silver. So <laughs> it is going to be. I'm gonna take some brassy brass. Oh no, whatever will you do? I don't know. Make it up as I go along. I think that, um... Actually, I lost my train of thought, so I don't think at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I had something that I was going to say about painting minis, but you know what? There it went. Yep. In one ear, out the other. I'm sure it'll come back to you. Some stage. I'll be driving home and I'll just be like, yep. oh, my thought. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I felt how big between the seat and the console. I hate it when it does that. Cool. But yeah, I think... Uh, Mr. Hummel's correct in that my style is more clean than anything else. And I'm not sure exactly why that is, but even when I do weathering mm -hmm. and dirty things up, it's still it's done in a fairly crisp. clean and precise manner. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Makes me chuckle. So. Yeah, 
I'm a big fan of artwork where you can see the brush strokes and see the uh, see the medium. So I okay. like messy charcoal pieces and very heavily done acrylic pieces and right. I think that's the, the tough part. I say tough, it might not be tough, but um, when you're talking about um, like 2D work or even sculpting or whatever it happens to be, um, when you're creating something new, you're the one creating the lines and the shapes, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, with a miniature, when you're painting a miniature, it's it's almost like you're you're coloring in, essentially. True. So, um, to I think to push paint miniature painting towards that traditional, I guess, understanding of or appreciation of um, traditional fine art, it's how do you work beyond the the shape that you're working on uh, how do you get those how do you push those brush strokes in there but have them mean something or be doing something on that three dimensional shape I think it can be a, a very interesting exercise Actually, funny thing, um, I mentioned Christoph, Christoph Kyle, who working on one of the, um, uh, my mind's gone like the art of books that I'm publishing and putting together. <laughs> uh, he did some uh, painting on miniatures based on a couple of sort of fantasy masters and their artwork. And strangely enough, I didn't bring these in. This was sitting just next to me when I walked in. Uh, there's like a Frazetta art piece there. So Frank Frazetta, this was, I think that's the Death Dealer art piece. And he painted up a Space Marine using like a, a Black Templar Space Marine, so black armor, using the colors that Frazetta used for his highlights and also painting it in the style. So the highlights were in a similar style to, to that. So he's translating this artwork into onto a miniature kind of thing That's of, really of cool. a completely different shape. And then you can see like presented the way he's handled the, um, the groundwork down here. It's very simple, like medium to light brown. That's what Christoph did on the, on the minis or on that, on that mini. So it was very cool. Yeah, it was a very interesting exercise, I think, to to mess around with. Nope. Okay. Uh, what have we got? Uh, Sean says, "I think we tend to do uh, tend to do what we feel is comfortable for us." Yep, I think that's good. Uh, Jay says, I like copper better than gold. Yep. I think the copper worked out pretty well. I mixed in a little bit of the dark sea blue, which is that wonderful green, dark green there. There's a little bit of verdigris kind of look to it. Um, Chris says, with my commissions, people normally want my style. I do think it's important, just like tattoos. You don't go to the traditional style expert for a photorealistic tattoo. I feel like that's very true. I yeah. have definitely had, back when I used to do more commission work, Yep. I definitely had that as a, a problem once or twice where someone would commission something and then, you know, midway through when I'm getting sketches done up, they're like, oh, wait, no, I want it in this style that you are not trained in. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> You're like, uh, I'm sorry, but yeah. May I please give you a reference for someone who is trained in that style? Yep. Usually how that conversation goes. <laughs> uh, 
They said, uh, I know I was sincere enthralled with one of Dave's Games Day Armies on Parade Project, uh, The Knights of Moor, I think, following on his mini page. And actually, got to go to that Games Day event and see it in person. So, many great conversions, a great looking army. Only problem was that the event lighting washed all the colors of the army out. It didn't pop like it had in the studio pics. Yep, that can be a that can definitely be a problem. Um, when you're if you're painting for uh, to like win a painting award in a, at a tournament, a gaming tournament, it's always a good idea to know what the lighting situations are going to be at that tournament, and paint in those lighting situations. Because okay, so if you paint in something different, it could look fantastic. But as soon as you put it into that localized kind of lighting spot at all as Dave said washes everything out um, can be really tough uh, Sean says uh, games workshop style um, talks about yeah uh, Dave says games workshop style is a thing basic method that all hobbyists get from their stores and their heavy metal team paint style yep heavy metal style is always very uh, clean and precise as well so I think I probably did a lot of copying from box covers and magazine articles and that kind of thing when I was uh, younger, and it just stuck, for sure. But yeah, styles are very interesting, very interesting thing. I'm almost done with this guy, almost. I still don't know if I'm going to do that tattoo. I don't think I will. I get just enough time to paint the base. And put that eye in there. I missed a couple of eyes. Can you believe it? <laughs> Need to hurry up and put the last little bit of uh, that metallic in there. And how's it looking? It's actually it's looking pretty. If I can, it's actually looking pretty good. Cool. Um, I'm not displeased with it so far um with that obviously the glow is not completely done i have some residual glow going on over here some of that some of that light if i yep. turned it this way so you can <laughs> see it um yep. so i think that's helping with the effect i know that technically i would have to put that glow effect on his face for it to be accurate but yeah i don't want to mess up his face that's cool. So we're gonna pretend the light source doesn't go there. We're just sure. We're just gonna pretend. That's just we're fine. Just <laughs> what's the um? What's that bottle that you've got in front of you right there? This that yeah. is rotten white. Rotten white, and it's an effect paint, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's an effects paint. Right. So is it? Te is that what's textured, or the the hammer was textured, yeah. or okay? Textured cool. up on there. Nice. But, uh, yeah. That's cool. Okay. And now that inside bit, which will either go really well or really won't. But you know, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. That's how it is. We just got finished saying it, it's okay. <laughs> that's good. Um, no, oh, JT said I want a painting event by default once. I was the only person that ever fully painted the army at the event. No. A, f funny, B, kind of sad. <laughs> There's a wonderful balance to that. But uh, I'm glad that you, uh, that you had everything painted there. Hopefully it might have inspired others. An amusing uh, award story. I uh, in a crystal brush competition, uh, which used to run at uh, Adepticon. I won gold in historical vehicle or historical large model category one year with a um, an oxen drawn. Uh, ox drawn water cart. Oh. And it wasn't, um, I'd painted it up for an army for uh, an event that we're 
or a game that we were playing actually at the show. Uh, and I entered it in the competition because I, I liked it. I realized it wasn't um, to anywhere near the, the quality of a lot of the the other folks that were going to win golds in their category. But uh, yeah, I won gold because I was the only person who entered that category. Oh. <laughs> and it's like, people, 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 tanks. How did nobody else paint a tank and enter a tank? Tanks are so incredibly popular, and like, there were a lot of them at that show that people were using. Like, man, you could have bumped me back to bronze. Just goes to show, if you don't do it, you'll you'll never know. Yep, got to be in it to win it. Exactly, but uh, yeah, so that was pretty cool. I'm going to paint the base brown and then let dry a little bit and then paint, uh, do some dry brushing with some gray over the top. Just because it looks like he's kind of standing on a rocky outcrop. If I wanted to have it look like mud, this would be the time to start sort of splashing it around his feet. But I'm going to go for that stone look instead. There we go. I just need to let that dry for a little bit. So I can take a go break. Go team, go. <laughs> I'm like catching up, reading. Like, oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, actually, uh, it's funny you mentioned doing a Gaunt's Ghost Army, Dave. Um, as you know, I've already done, I painted one for myself a long time ago, nearly 20 years ago. Uh, and I painted one, uh, I've been painting one over the last decade for a client, uh, on and off. We work on uh, different bits and pieces. Uh, but now I think I'm finally going to go back and paint my own again. Do a completely new army. That I've done twice before. Yeah. That's the way to go. Uh... Josh Potter says Dallimore with his low, mid, high is where I think most of us start. So that's Kevin Dallimore. Um, Kevin Dallimore now works for um, North Star Military Figures uh, in the UK. Um, definitely check out Kevin's stuff. It's uh, he has definitely has a very particular style. Works um, very well for a lot of sort of historical miniatures. But um, Kevin, I think we've we talked about it before. Uh, how some people work on the largest part of a model first or it might be like the uniform or armor or um, fur or whatever it might happen to be people pick something different to to start with Kevin always works from the inside out so he'll start with he'll prime a model black and he'll start by painting the eyes that's cool and then he'll paint the skin so he paints the face around the eyes that he's already put in and then the first layer of clothing, second layer of clothing, any armor or accessories, that kind of thing. So he works out, um, which is a very interesting approach, but it gives him a very particular style. Um, so definitely worth checking out. Um, Josh Potter always also mentions uh, Mike McVeigh and uh, some of the earlier metal, heavy metal stuff. Um, Reaper's color triads. Uh, yeah, Reaper have got those foundry triads as well. So those work with a like three colors in a set that um, where you might have like the middle color will be the base the base color mm -hmm. then you'll have a shade and a highlight that work well with that base color uh, so you don't have to do any mixing um, 
or you might start with the ba the shadow paint the shadow color on first and then highlight up with the, the other two um but yeah josh if you're trying to figure out where to go with technique i think um maybe something to try is to get a whole bunch of um similar miniatures and then try different techniques or different approaches that you've been thinking about on each one and sit back and have a look and think about which ones you liked working on most which results you like the best um, and get, sort of work towards getting a balance of something in there It'd be a good experiment i think uh dave says yay i want to see yep i'll i've got to buy the parts for it now i have some of them for sure but uh, i definitely need to go and work out what i'm going to have in that army Oh, Sean said, I have one. Uh, I got third place in a Golden Demon back in 1996 and have not won since. Oh. Well, uh, Golden Demon is coming back to the US. It's going to be at Adepticon 2022. So definitely uh, train us out there. Very cool. Uh, I don't think I'll be entering that, but I'll be spending a bunch of time watching uh, or looking at the, uh, the minis that people have entered. Definitely cool. So how's it going now? Um, You've got the, the half painted. And yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, you're putting in the metal on the... Yeah, I put in I put in some metal. I'm going to do a quick little wash to get into all the shadowy bits because I don't want it cool. that bright because that's all in shadow. Right. I did add a little bit of pink up here. I noticed that, So it's that, not yeah. on his face, but to maybe kind of cheat. <laughs> sure. <laughs> cheat yeah. the light source a little bit. So, um, yeah, and you got some I might under, do... underneath there as well. Yeah, I got some underneath under the there sleeve. to try to try to get that going. Cool. Might do maybe a teeny tiny bit right like here to kind of make it look like it's super spread out. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, take it too no, much. I wouldn't too further. Spread it out any further. Because at the moment you've got like plausible deniability for the the face. Yeah. Oh yeah. If I go around, then I don't have. <laughs> yeah. If, if you, like if if everywhere else the like it stops this far away, like. It's a very it's it's a very this, soft, this far. subtle glow of magic. <laughs> um. <laughs> it defies physics as well. Well, it's magic. So. It is magic. Yeah. There you go. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna put a little bit of some black ink in the deepest bitty bits of shadow. Um, and then I am going to grab a actual white and see about popping some of those highlights a little brighter for the glow effects. Cool. I don't know. I don't, we don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Nice. I'm just doing it. But I do like how his face turned out and I overall have thoroughly enjoyed how this miniature is coming out. Um, I think he's, he's looking quite good. Can't wait to get some good pictures of them cool. because uh yeah i like that um if he had a bigger base i would do a bit of glowy on the floor like i'm gonna do a little bit probably right but um the base doesn't go out enough to where the glow would <laughs> right show up it's a tough thing with uh doing the osl where's the object source lighting Knowing where to take it to, um, how it's going to impact all of those other other elements you've already worked on. Light sources. If you want to see a, a really cool, crazy um, sort of light source uh, painting that's done quite quickly by somebody who definitely knows what they're, they're, they're doing, um, to check out... Uh, Paul Tan, or um, I think it's Kenneth Tan. He posts either one of those two. But um, he's done some fantastic YouTube videos on painting the Cursed City box set from uh, Games Workshop, where he's, he did like a red glow from underneath. So the, the source of the light is away from the miniature. But basically everything sort of coming from one side underneath is this lovely vibrant red glow. And it shows how he, he went and sort of went along and did that and like primed the model black first and then airbrushed the glow on from underneath 
and then from the opposite direction did like the zenithal priming with white i definitely feel like airbrush helps yeah yeah he has um he's got a video in there as well of um how to do it with a brush how to apply it with the uh, with a brush which is very cool so in in that case the, the airbrush definitely helps for the smoothness and speed which is uh, obviously a bit more important when you're painting um, an army full of, full of meetings with that lighting effect, but it's definitely cool. If you like the idea of learning more about object source lighting, check him out. Probably if you go to YouTube and search um, Warhammer Curse City or Warhammer Quest Curse City. There we go. They came up pretty quickly. So that's using uh, basalt gray. Over a charred brown base. And I didn't bring. Well, actually, yeah, I'll use that. Now I'm going to use some light gray for the, the highlight. I just realized I didn't, previously I didn't highlight his toes. So I might need to go back and do that. What color do you think his toenails would be? If they're the same color as mine, they'd be red right now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't think his would be red. You're not feeling it? I'm not feeling it. Like, not feeling the red? Not, not the red for this diatrol, no. <laughs> James, I just put a light in the miniature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a few friends that do that. I feel like it would be super nifty. Like. Yep. Definitely good to do. There we go. Okay. So just a little bit of uh, light gray there to get the, the tops of that stone and finally I'm going to highlight these toes and uh, and actually these long claws that he's got <laughs> I'm going to paint those a little bit differently I'm going to paint them it's rather than being like um, fingernails mm -hmm. on the end of the fingers I'm going to paint them like um, the fingers kind of morph into them Ooh, yeah. You know, like a go through brown and um, to black at the end. I'm gonna do that. I think that could work. Which will then mean that his his toenails can be black or brown, or a bit of both. So yep, there we go. I'm just going to do it on this. Oh, maybe not. I forgot that he has five arms. No wonder I was avoiding painting the the fingers or the fingernails. <laughs> Twenty-five fingernails. I've got five minutes to do it. Better get going. Can make it happen. Yeah. Okay. Make it work. Probably won't be as um, much of a transition as I would have liked, but we'll make it happen. So many different angles to get it. So yeah, I think I'm trying to get my style going on this day, but it's not, uh, not going to be quite as successful.
It'll be fun. It'll have been fun. <laughs> Need like a, a pen to just do little tiny booth highlights. Inside like a little the uh, eyes. white. Yeah. White highlight pen. Yeah. I did actually buy um, some graffiti pens at one point, but they would have been too big for eyes and stuff like that. But I bought those for terrain, painting, drawing graffiti on terrain. Okay, I'll switch to a bigger brush so I can put more paint on at once. Kind of looks like he's been digging in the dirt. Maybe he has. Maybe. Maybe he likes the dirt. There we go. I think doing it this way, there's a little bit of a um, kind of a witchy feel as well. I say witch, more like um, the very dark kind of. Grimm's fairy tales. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. What was the, um, there's a movie that came out recently, I say recently, it could be the last two or three years, um, that was, it was like a Hansel and Gretel. Was it just Hansel and Gretel? Gretel? Or was it like Gretel and, oh, yeah. I'm not sure, but it was. Uh, okay, well there, there was one that was a horror, and then there was one that was like a, an action. Right. Not not the action one with, um, like, Jeremy Renner. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking that one. Oh, I'm, is it where, like, the girl and the... It's like an older teenage girl? Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of the... the there's, there are times in the movie where you're thinking, okay, well, it's not... It's the witch wants to teach her... Things. Bye, JT. Yeah. Teach her how to be a, a witch. And in the passing, like the passing on of, of that knowledge. Yeah. yeah. I think that one might just be called the witch. Hmm. I don't think that one's no, the witch. I think that's a different one. Yeah, that was one that was set in, uh, like, Quebec, I think. Oh. Yeah. But. Well, there we go. Hooray! It's done, and it's nine o'clock. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna move it to the camera. I'm gonna pin we up the bottom of this real quick, and then I'm gonna do the same. We don't have a spinning tonight, but uh, are you able to switch to it, Luna? Nope. Yes. Yep. Cool. Perfect. I can finish up. <laughs> Plenty of time. <laughs> Got a whole second. All you can I do need. it. They're very cool. Uh, do, do, do. What do we got? Uh, oh, there we go. Looks good. Yeah. I was going to say that the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, the claws add a creepy vibe. And it's like, the whole thing's the creepy vibe. <laughs> the claws may be the least creepy thing about it. But. Yeah. It's inter interesting because halfway through, I yep. feel like the skin was really bright. Right. But now that you've kind of softened it or made it more stretched yep. looking, it is much, much more creepy. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, for sure. That worked out well. Cool. Just quickly, I'm just gonna jump back in the chat. Um, 
Josh mentioned uh, Gundam pens are a good secret weapon. Uh, James says they make uh, point zero markers. Um, or not, sorry, zero one markers. Uh, he uses a lot. Zero one is point two five a millimeter, quarter of a millimeter. That's tiny, tiny. Um, JT says, "Have a great night, everyone. See you next week. Bye, JT." All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna plot mine. Can they both fit? Yeah. Can they both fit? Oh, can long they both fit? Arms. Let's uh, see. So that's oh. still wet on the bottom. Oh, okay. I get, I have arms. There we go. Huh? <laughs> it took all of my arms, but. Excellent. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> I just realized as well that the microphone is right here. Oh. <laughs> so I, when I stood up then, it was just like, boom. <laughs> we'll get there, folks. We'll get there. It'll be fine. Yeah. It'll be fine. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> just, he's just trying to do his job slinging hash at Garistros, and everyone is calling him creepy. <laughs> it's true. Uh. That's how he makes the hash. Yeah, oh, but that's why he's so good at it. It's kind of Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. But yeah. Excellent. Right. Fantastic. It turned out quite well. Hooray! Another Woo! successful evening of painting. All right. Minis were painted. Minis were painted. Conversations were had. They were indeed. Good night. <laughs> 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 That'd be a horrible outro. That would be the worst outro ever. Oh, man. No, it wouldn't be the worst one ever. No, it would sure not be the worst, worst one ever. <laughs> But it'd be pretty bad. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that was our show tonight. We'll see you guys next Thursday or at your friendly local game store.